or good evening, wherever you might be. Um, so before we get going, uh, for anybody that is newly joined, uh, I just wanted to go over what we're doing. So we've got this kind of concept image, um, which I'm loosely creating. Uh, really from here focusing on this tree I like some of the ideas the let's make this bigger um, I like the faces and the stuff kind of coming out of the tree so that's kind of the idea and then some of the terrain I'll also be um, taking some ideas from as well uh, so we're in ZBrush at the moment uh, back in Max you can see some some of the base layout so when we last left our uh, our tree, I had started to sculpt some, not the tree, um, some base rocks, which I'm gonna finish off this guy here. I'm gonna make a couple of changes and then I'm gonna take this back out to Max and start to work on uh, the base of this tree and how these roots are going to interact with this stuff. And then from there, I'm going to come back to ZBrush and further uh, sculpt these rocks and then final them based on what I've done with the tree. So it's going to be kind of a, a back and forth type thing. So that said, um, Friday mornings, I think I'll be able to, able to, wow, I cannot talk. Um, I think I'll be able to maintain the schedule. They're going to have to be shorter classes than the evening ones. Um, so I'll try to compensate for that, but uh, unless you guys want to be serenaded by my twins uh, screaming in the background, then uh, I'll have to cut them short. Generally, an hour or something like that. Otherwise, and uh, then I got to get the machine rolling. So, without uh, any further ado, unless there are any pressing questions in the chat window, I'm going to get started here. All right, so we're going after this box and if I am <laughs> slow uh, that's because it's early all right I'm gonna grab my tablet all right guy up with F and uh, by now you should know the drill so we are going to dynamesh this guy maximum resolution so we've got about 200,000 uh, polys to to play with here and trim smooth border uh, if you haven't watched the other videos uh, let's just one minute, let me. If you haven't watched the other videos, they can all be found on YouTube. Um, I'm posting all of these, you know, after the classes, so feel free, come here, uh, sign up, or follow if you want. Um, but they are here, so. Some of what I'm going to be covering, I'm just picking up from, you know, where I left off here. Uh, also, additionally, if you go over to Facebook and follow me, there's a link up at the top of the chat window. Uh, if you are not already following me, I do kind of updates for the stream and stuff like that as well there. Um, and then I'll probably have some, like, one-off classes, things that are not on the, the quote-unquote schedule I want to square alpha uh, I'll post up there if I'm gonna like do an extra session or I'm just kind of messing with something uh, that I might like stream and maybe somebody can get a benefit from it one of the things that I do a lot is just like random random R&D for stuff so I might be messing with a, a fluid thing or um, lately I've been messing with uh, Houdini's uh, sand solver, whatever it might be, when I can, I will, um, obviously some of my R&D my I 
cannot share with you. But any R&D that I can share, I'm happy just to let the stream go while I'm while I'm working on something. All right, so I've got trim smooth border brush, dinging this guy up, just getting those edges real quick. making some just kind of broad scoping changes here. I'm going to really kink this area just to piss it off. Yeah, take that. <clears throat> so, remembering and thinking about, you know, silhouette and scale. So. It's a lot harder to talk when you're tired. I also have like groggy voice. Boo, show us all your secrets. <laughs> I would love to. Um, after, after it's uh, public, I can tell you everything. I did. That's for sure. For sure. Like, if there's something too that like I've done that you want to know, like, what did you do or how did you do that? And you see it like on my uh, on my site or somewhere else. Uh, if I created it, I'm happy to uh, happy to tell you and show you. Um, I'll do better than talk about it. All right. Oh God, I can't believe I've made the worst, I've done the worst thing I can, which is using this fucking, uh, that material. So as I said before, get rid of that thing. Uh, it, it lies. So, uh, use the basic material. Man, I can't. <laughs> 6 a.m. comes really early. Uh, I actually woke up at like 4:30 because you know when you have to like wake up. You got like you're going to the airport or something like that, and uh, you wake up like two hours before you actually uh, need to be awake. I I did that, which is super awesome. It's like uh, when when I was in school and would wake up and get in the shower and then realize it's freaking three o'clock in the morning. I don't need to be awake right now. Go back to bed. But instead I watched um, this really cool uh, video on reference and whatnot. I had posted it in the stream earlier, but I put it up on my Facebook site. Um, so check it out there. Uh, great video. Just on like ideas and using reference to create or, uh, you know, to generate ideas from your reference and as well as some, uh, some cool places to go to, to, to get said reference beyond what, like, you know, my normals. Cause that's, it's definitely a thing. Like we get kind of caught up, um, Jimmy Dynamash control, uh, left drag. All right. And then I'm going to go and I'm like on two trains of thought. Um, you know, we definitely get caught in uh, in kind of ruts using the same, looking at the same stuff again and again. So this is kind of cool to watch just to get somebody else's uh, thoughts on it. So I would recommend checking it out. And just... Messing, messing with this guy. Just looking at this kind of angle, looking at looking at it from here. So again, you know, we always want to be conscious of that that silhouette. So that's really kind of what I'm what I'm looking at right now is more kind of broad strokes of this guy. It's like a shoe. Um, nothing 
Nothing too specific yet. Alright, and let's look at him in the grand scheme of things. Alright, we got some shit. Wow, I've like managed to sculpt like a very similar rock. <laughs> Not me too. Uh lame. Alright. So let's remedy that. Uh, move. Just to pull things around. Larger. Asshole. And, and trim smooth to come in and angle this stuff out. And again, you know, large brushes at this point in the game. So we're not we're not bringing this home to mother. This is just base base level stuff. Overwork one, one area. This is a three D object, and we'd like to, you know, as I was talking about before, if you're going to spend the time on this thing, make it so you can use it elsewhere. And flat color. All right, so it's okay. It's okay. That's uh, he's okay-ish. I'll probably let's just real quick before I yeah take that. So we got some nastiness, dynamesh, and voila, and check that I didn't mess anything up. Real quick, is that trim smooth border can give us some nasty kinks and stuff like that. So, just wanna, yeah, like this could, if we, um, if we persist, this area could become a uh, a nasty little thing. But all I gotta do is come in real quick, grab that edge there, and smooth it out. Alright, so, alright, I want, I still, I don't know that the scale of these two guys, I might want something bigger over here, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Looking at this, like, I think like this scale rocks as opposed to like this little guy um, is going to be better over here so I think what I'm going to do is um, move some shit around uh, put down my pen and have coffee before I knock it over and spill it on myself alright so moving stuff in um, in ZBrush we use this transpose tool um, so this guy and is it this one right yeah all right so these three are a little bit larger and I think that um, it's kind of what I'm gonna want to use here um, I might just grab this guy that's kind of hidden back here behind behind him and move him out 
think that that's this guy. And I'm wrong. It's going to be the last one I pick, of course. Yes, it is. I should have just picked the one I was going to go to last first. Alright, let's get this guy. Pull him out. So this tool is kind of kind of weird, but um, it can work. Yeah. That's going to be... This guy kind of sitting out framing here. This is going to be better. Move him down just slightly. Then I still think like everything... Everything needs to come down a little bit more. You know, we want enough room for our guys that are going to be, like, in here. Um, and I was thinking with this one to uh, ultimately what I'd like to do. Uh, I was recently working on something in effect for for a shot, and it was kind of this, like, noise. Um, like, velocity field disturbed particles kind of shooting out from something. Uh, it was pretty fun to do, and... I kind of thought that these guys, their their mouths, like, open them up wider and make them kind of emitting. They're, like, pouring out this, like, fluidy, light, light stuff. I don't know exactly what it is yet, but um, kind of thinking about adding something like that to this. Um, so, we might end up doing that down the road. Which would be fun. Let's see, what's this? Those are the hidden ones. That guy. I think he can stay. This guy needs to come down. So I'm just moving stuff around, rearranging them in ZBrush, because I want enough room for my roots. I'm thinking about, like, I'm going to end up going back into uh, Max here in a minute, and um, I'm thinking about how this tree is going to splay out over this and then also making sure that I have enough room for uh, my other components so just doing some house cleaning real quick and then I'm going to actually duplicate this guy Bring him over here. So this is where it's like, you know, I know you'll notice I I got rid of those other two rocks and for the moment that's fine. Like don't don't be too attached to something just because you spent time on it. Uh, the best things you can do is just throw something out. If it's not working, just get rid of it. Uh, one of the worst mistakes we can make is trying to trying to make something work that just just isn't. Fucking hate the rotate tool. How is it? Yeah, I always forget. There we go. They were not thinking of me when they to suck this layout. <laughs> more, more software developers should think of me. Alright. Something maybe like that. And ultimately, you know, I'm going to re-sculpt this guy and bang him up. So he's not going to be the same as this. But even so, you know, we're looking at it from two different sides view you know the the viewer is not going to recognize this thing once it's covered with roots and all the stuff that um that i'm going to do to it so won't won't matter a whole bunch where did i hide the other guy where'd he go should really name these something better than rock a b i always do that it's like worst possible name I could have. Let's move this guy over here. Rotate him around. Nope. Yes. Nope. <laughs> Which one is it? Nope. Apparently that 
action is undoable. Go back to the move. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. I just, just glanced the transpose thing. I looked at it wrong, got ticked. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not gonna rotate it. I'm just gonna ding it up because I don't care. All right, cool. So this is my like, you know, super base at this point. And not to say that any of this is, is done, but I wanna start kind of having a dialogue between my sculpt and my, my tree because these two things are going to be uh, dependent on each other. So I'm going to save as, make a new version. All right, now I'm gonna do a couple of things. So for uh, for grow effects, let's um, let's go to maps and talk. Have coffee to talk. All right, for grow effects. Oh yeah, this is my baked guy. Let's get the onion. Put my tablet down. live guy, turn this other stuff off. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I've got the trunk that I've created, we've got these branches and whatnot. Now we want some roots that are going to interact with, um, with these rocks that we've begun to sculpt and whatnot. So in order to do this, uh, when we create our roots, we're going to use a direction modifier that's called wait for it uh, cleverly object reaction okay so this tool will select uh, you can have one object right now you could add multiples multiple object reactions but the key here is to take all of your stuff and kind of collapse it down into one into one object now if I were to do this in max, I would get, like if I were to have like, you know, four boxes that I've created and then use perhaps like the claps uh, here or just collapse them down to a mesh. If they're overlapping, those verts still exist inside and that will seriously piss off uh, grow effects. And I don't recommend that you do it that way. What I do recommend is that you take all of these guys and create one object out of them. And so this is where some of the power of, um, of DynaMesh comes into play. So we, we have all of these guys, right? And they exist here and we can take them, we can collapse them into one object and then we can re-DynaMesh that object. And this will give us kind of a, a dummy object that grow effects can interact with inside of max. So I'm gonna do that. And so how I'm going to do that is I saved up, right? And I'm going to, this file, I'm just gonna throw it away after this point. I could take all these guys and copy them and whatever um, and organize it, but I'm just not going to. Um, this is faster. I generally go with what's faster, uh, close and reopen. So everything that I want to collapse is visible. And I'm gonna say under the merge on the sub tools, merge visible. And it didn't do it. Oh, that might merge down, merge down. I think that's just when it, it's selected. I was thinking that would grab all of them, but. All right, so now these are all one object, but we'd have the same problem here as we would in um, in Max if I were to bring this back, back over and try to use this as a collision object for the object reaction in, uh, in Grow Effects. 
we'd have verts and all sorts of nastiness inside of here. So we don't want that. <clears throat> I'm going to dynamesh this guy again. So let it think. Pressing. Maybe it'll crash, maybe it won't. And then the next thing we're going to do is uh, decimate it. I don't need a 1.3 million poly or 1.2 million poly uh, object for my uh, grow effects to react to. So, right, this is this is overkill. So we've got one object now, and go under Z plugins, decimation master. I'm going to use this guy. This is going to you know, go over the surfaces and re-topologize this guy in a, it looks nasty, but it works really, really well for uh, for what we're gonna do. So pre-process current. So this first goes through and analyzes the mesh, uh, figures out what it can do with it. I'm sure it's looking at like, you know, face normals and whatever, fancy fancy stuff and it's thinking very hard at this point so the other cool thing about um, the object reaction let's, um, let's start to while we're waiting for that if we create a new uh, distributor and I'm just gonna bring this to the top because this guy's going to be a root um, all right, and the distributor guy. And generally, just turn everything off so it's not a visual clusterfuck. I just want a couple of things on. Um, so once we've created this, and we're going to create our object reaction, uh, we're going to end up using this magnetic mode, and what you can do, it's got these two calculation methods, right? One is use vertices, and this is use the vertices of your existing mesh, or the second is to generate points on the face, and this basically creates a point cloud on the surface. So when you've got, and why would you want this? Because right now, our surface looks like this, right? Uh, or our faces look like this. They're very well distributed, which is all good, right? Um, GrowFX, when it does its algorithm and it's looking for vertices to interact with, it's gonna find lots of verts and have no problem. Problem is, problem, problem, is, let's talk about that little bug in a second, uh, is that once I decimate this, the faces are all going to be different sizes. There's going to be vertices everywhere. It's not going to have enough uh, resolution to to tell it to kind of smooth out and whatnot. So, in order to get around that, I'll use the the uh, curl effects to generate uh, its own point cloud. So, we've got generally I kind of explicitly say like how many. I want I don't really use the percentage here uh, and when you want to use this explicit number you gotta kind of wake this guy up just nudge it and then take the number you want especially if you've gone through a whole bunch like if I'm like decimating everything out for the final uh, wake this thing up otherwise it'll just do kind of whatever it last last did all right and decimate so now we've got this kind of look um, and for this, we can go lower res, so I can just simply undo 25, maybe. Yeah, that'll probably be fine. All right, so once we've done that, export. Uh, go down to your export panel. You do not want groups. You don't need that. Uh, that'll group. If you have separate objects, it takes them and groups them, and sometimes that can uh, be bad shit. So you don't want that. Now we're in uh, class three. I just made a new folder for this, and under my ZBrush, I have Desi. So that's the decimated, 
and I'm going to call this rock formations hero and then um, I like to label uh, the decimation uh, resolution that I've done for any particular decimation it's good because sometimes you get kind of you're going back and forth and you're you're testing the decimation level for your final back inside of max and it's uh, nice to have a point of reference for like you know a decimation of 150,000 is what worked um, so when you go back to the file you know what you're doing all right and we're going to import said just go here said rock formation and I do not want a material get rid of that freaking thing otherwise sure all right so we've got our rock formation that is going to sit around our tree here. Uh, and one thing that when you import this guy, he's going to uh, have um, smoothing on the faces and whatnot. So just select them. And actually, Voitech, I think, you're here. Didn't you come up with a solution to get rid of this? Uh, so you'll see like the smoothing groups make it all soft and whatnot if you bring back a decimated mesh from max in or from zbrush into max and you don't clear those smoothing groups uh you're gonna be wondering why does my stuff look all freaking weird uh so kind of important at render time for this it's not so important as this is just like junk garbage mesh all right and i'm going to in my useful well this is useful i'm going to create a new group a group. I wish I could get the new onion to work on my uh, on my computer. Really a bummer. And a new layer. Rename layer. So I'm just going to call this grow effects interaction geo. It's hard to type when you're not awake. And organize in. Just put this under my useful. Useful is going to end up like once I get down to the to the end of this thing. Uh, this is going to be shit that I kind of throw away. Uh, sometimes it's not, but for the most part, it's stuff like once we kind of bake the tree and collapse this stuff down and it's become a sculpt inside of ZBrush, I'm not going to need this interaction geo anymore. And, and, it's, you, and it's good to know that, you know, it's good to know where you've put the stuff that you can get rid of. Oftentimes when we're working, we just like you know throw kind of stuff everywhere and you kind of lose track of it you lose sight so just a little house cleaning tip pro tip um, all right so I think at this point that guy is not in this layer so there we go all right and I'm gonna save All right, so now we're gonna create some roots. And at this point we have a single distributor and he's, you can kind of faintly see him he's bloop, popping out there, right? And we want more. So I'm going to come over here to my count and I probably, I don't know, I'm gonna start with like nine because that's the number that I did on. Uh, and then I'm going to offset all of this, right? So right now everything's going up in the uh, in the wrong direction. So we can do a couple of things to remedy that. Uh, one is you can do a hard bend. 
and by default this guy starts you can see like everything like went over uh they're all sad you uh can just change this position here to zero and the chaos go to zero and the angle to 90 or 180 or whatever what is it yeah 180 all right so now these guys are kind of all pointed in the downward direction um, and then Oh yeah, that's right. I always do this as a path distributor. So I can adjust his height. Yeah. Alright. Blow that away. I'm not thinking. Alright, so I, I create a path distributor out of this and uh, and this is why. You'll see. Starting path. Oh, because you're turned off. Okay. All right. So now we've got like shit everywhere, right? And I don't want that. I just want like let's go down to ten and ten. <laughs> All right. So I just want these roots to grow from from the base here, like they're doing. So I'm gonna kind of lock this, bring this down so we've got, you know, zero and four or something like that. And um, then bring up my levels. No, not my levels, my density. God. So you'll see that um, now we've got all these little like root guys hanging out down here. And once we add, and really, I might want to bring those guys up a little bit more. We'll see what we get. So, once you've got this, and you add an object reaction to it, let's just save, because I get paranoid any time I do stuff like this. Alright, so now you can see everything pop, jumped to that mesh, right? Which is cool. Uh, I want to use generate points on face. So if you say show magnetic points, so you can see GrowFX has distributed a point cloud all over the surface that it is now using uh, to calculate this interaction between the roots and, uh, and the geometry. So that's good. We want that because otherwise it'd be using all the janky vertices and, and whatnot that, um, that we kind of created in our sculpt. And then it's a matter of just kind of tweaking this out to taste. I'm first though, uh, as I said before, you know, the, the order of this stuff matters. So I'm going to add a random direction. If I can find it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> of course, it's the first fucking thing. <laughs> God, I'm not awake. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna add a random direction. And as I said, the order of this stuff matters. So my object reaction here, if I turn the random direction off, is pulling everything to the surface. But if I add a random direction after the object reaction, you'll see this guy comes off the surface and that's not what we want. Instead, we wanna add a random direction. We wanna kind of jitter what they're doing before they react so they start to do some some cooler things on the rocks right and that is the idea all right and as per usual so a couple of things i have uh, not messed with my step size yet and i probably want to do that now an important thing though when you're using this object reaction So for roots and stuff like that, what you'll notice is if I change my step size here, right, like stuff just got way different because it's using all of these points to calculate based on 
you know, the interaction here as well. So like the point cloud that it generated and the points, your step size, these things matter. Um, and when you want very like tight uh, interaction, you're gonna need to bring this step size up so that it properly calculates the relationship between this geo and, and the root. For something like this, I can probably get away with like a little bit less, but what I can get away with on on my trunk and whatnot, and what I can do on the roots if I want really nice interaction, those are gonna be two totally different things. So now let's, uh, let's pull these guys in. So I'm just adjusting the like distance that a root can be from um, from the geo before it starts to pull it down. And I don't know that I want to, well, leave that. Make the reflection size a little bit. So that's kind of like how it contours to it. Um, if you don't turn on magnetic and you just turn on reflect, these guys are basically just going to try to avoid uh, the geo. It's not that they're going, they're not going to curl around on it. And you can see the difference here. If I turn magnetic on, they all kind of jump to it. Uh, right now it's not really strong enough so I can just set my strength up higher now they're starting to kind of splay out on the surface in a uh, in a much more interesting way right I'm gonna turn off the show points the other thing if you want like really tight interaction as well you're gonna have to adjust this steps on face uh, to a smaller value so you have higher density in the point cloud that it generates and then likewise higher density in your step size of your splines uh, that you're creating to get you know this very specific uh, thing. Now, all of that's going to come with a uh, penalty as far as time to calculate and process and whatnot, but that's you know kind of comes with the turf when you want these very, very specific things. All right, so let's save. And then I want to look at this. I want to add a mesh to this. This is another area where I'm going to use meta mesh here because I want the uh, the faces of these roots to kind of naturally grow out of the the trunk that I've created. And this is going to be like a high calculation, um, you know, process. Once you get down to this and you start creating all these little roots, your meta mesh can get very heavy. So I'm gonna try to make this go as quick as possible. Right, and let's mesh this and see what we get. All right, so that, <laughs> some sort of like blobby potato or something. I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> it's awesome. So we need to adjust our um, our fall off here. And let's say this is one, I don't know, just throwing a number out there and rematch. Okay, that might be slightly better. Now we're gonna have a lot more roots uh, when this is all said and done, so that might end up working. But these guys are a little like at this point. Um, I'm gonna go with point eight. That might end up being better. And let's make these guys longer. And this is gonna, you're gonna see everything completely, totally change. And obviously the longer they get, the more calculation. All right, and 
let's turn off the mesh and give it some chaos so we've got variation in the lengths of these guys and let's boost the number of them and you see like I'm kind of getting some like lag here now that I'm calculating more uh, more roots more interaction you start to get like, a little bit of a hit and getting stuff kind of like stuck around the middle there a little bit so I'm gonna go grab I created that um, which vector is it I think it was this vector to push um, push my trunk or my branches out or no that was on my trunk wasn't it I think it's this guy I think you are the one I'm looking for so I'm gonna paste that in here and again order matters by default yeah this is the one I want so that vector just like launches everything away from the center and you know what I don't want is to calculate a whole bunch of roots on the inside of this tree like that's gonna suck so I want to push everything out from the center and then randomly kind of mess with it and then have it um, you know cling to the rocks and that's better that's you know a better use of my uh, of my calculation and of the mesh and everything so it should be more good let's mesh that let's sip coffee oh so tired okay so I think that um, find my roots I bring this guy back up I don't know let's see and this is why you know mesh mesh early and often so you start to get an idea of what of what stuff is looking like and I don't really mind that some of them are kind of getting stuck together and um, ending up with these kind of shapes and trees do that they get like lumpy and kind of weird looking so that stuff's okay that doesn't really bother me um, but I think I want to bring this let's try six so this is the range that my um, my path distributor that is the roots along the trunk uh, how high it's going to travel so I'm gonna see if just bringing it up ever so slightly one it's going to create more roots but two it might give me some kind of better interaction up here I don't want too much but I do want more um, so that's gone maybe a little like it's doing what I want but now my meta mesh is like a lumpy turd so I need to readjust that and let's say uh, 1.2 maybe let's see what we get yeah, almost maybe just one and these aren't going to be the only roots right it's um this is just like my base layer and then I'll add others up on top of this and in a similar fashion as I did with the branches like one will have the meta mesh and be all like you know uh, high res and making sure I've got these like cool unions here uh, I think what I am going to do is keep that at 1.2 and then throw a curve I could fall off on that and then the smaller roots and everything those can just be standard um, cylinder mesh they nobody's going to see these like little fine interactions especially once you come in and put forest pack 
on top of that with like moss and all sorts of little all the little jazz so it's just like um, you know adding the impression of detail it's important not to get too caught up in trying to like add every little tiny detail so I'm gonna turn that off just so I can Sometimes if you've got the mesh on, just trying to like tweak that curve, you end up like fighting step by step by step. Come on. I love how impatient I get with that. I mean, it's like, that's just so awesome fast. I mean, really, when you think about it, that's some nasty shit. It's like frost for trees. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go. Getting there. Just slightly fine tuning. Now I kind of want, I want to see if I can get a couple of these to kind of go out a little farther. Let's turn this random direction off. Just so I can see exactly what's going on here. Sometimes if you crank this max strength too high, you'll end up kind of like clipping them before they ever get to before they ever really travel all that far. Well, that was nice. It's like a dance party. That might be better. Make them a little longer. Yeah, and then add some more chaos. So this is just to get some varied, varied length on these guys. Make them look not so uniform. You know, because the uniform is bad in K. And let's mesh that and see what that looks like. Go, go, go. So as I said before, you know, making them longer, more calculation. That guy there is doing something wonky, so I'll probably have to pull up the max strength. Yeah, that's that's better. I just want some like stuff kind of going around, and also you know as um. As we turn this thing around, yes, the camera is over there, but I, as I'm working on this object, I really kind of want to think about it in uh, in three dimension. This is kind of to um, what um, you know Voitech was asking about as far as like doing stuff for a still and doing stuff for a um, for an animation. This type of like hero object, you know, we'd make sure that it's presentable from all sides. Um, shit like that, I'm, I can clean up in in uh, ZBrush, but you know, don't get don't get too attached to it. 
from just like one angle. And really, honestly, as you saw, like in ZBrush, I will um, oftentimes, you know, like an asset I'm working on, I kind of just dis discover like, oh, you know what? It looks like better from over here and take everything, whoop, rotate it. Uh, just because you started it like this doesn't mean it can't become something else. And if you are only working like this one spot, you know, you kind of uh, limit your possibilities. So I think that's better. Uh, I do want to crunch down a little bit on this guy. Just to get that one root to behave a little bit better. And you'll see like everything just totally changed, right? That's the one kind of, it's the one bitch of this. It's like you get you might find something where you're like, yeah, that looks cool, and then it, uh, if you've got to change something, it's it's going to be different. All right, so let's mesh and then save. And then I'm going to bake this guy down again, and I'm going to take it back out to ZBrush. Yes, thank you, Jerry. Commenting on the, the chat window. All right. Ugh. Don't really like that. Hmm. Not going to bake it. So, change my density. Oops, mesh it again. Just getting this like lump right there. Not really feeling that. All right, I'm gonna bring it back up. So I do want all that stuff. Let's tweak this slightly. Yeah, there we go. That kind of opened it up. That might help. So just messing with the smoothing, that's kind of how that noise is applied to this. So as opposed to them being kind of more uh, janky and kind of it smooths out, uh, it is slightly counterintuitive, the higher the value, the less uh, smoothing you have. Or the, <laughs> God, the more smoothing, the more smooth it's going to be. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's better. All right, so save. I wanted to save with the version up. Apparently it wants to be a dick. All right. So again, I'm going to go back to, so this is my GrowFX hero guy. He's labeled as such GrowFX here, so I know he is a live GrowFX object. Go back to my baked. This guy is now garbage. Turn this guy on. And the other thing, I need to turn on my other trunks here. I'm gonna go into manual update mode so I can I can do that. So these guys come in and probably what's going to happen here is that everything is going to shift and change. Uh, it's because now the meta mesh is going to be calculating this stuff um, and that's just kind of what happens. But that's okay. Got to think, and uh, you know, you can see like as I, 
as this gets more and more kind of uh, detailed and intricate, these times are going to keep going up. So, you know, you only want to mesh when it's final, uh, like one time. And didn't change it too bad. Alright, so now I want to copy this guy. GrowFX. Baked. And I want to put the baked one. Make sure that I've got baked into this layer. And what you'll notice is that um, that mesh isn't built and you got to rebuild it. And the other important thing is that we want to make sure we have convert to mesh turned on. Okay, so update to rebake it. I was just wondering how does GrowFX compare to Speed Tree? Uh, so they're they're pretty similar. Um, I would say that um, you know as a Max user, I like using Speed Tree simply because it is inside of Max. I don't have to go out to another program uh, as much as I can if I can stay native. I I like to. Uh, also, you know, the splines, the editors and things that, that it's got, it's kind of a different way of going about it. Speed tree is awesome, you know, just because you can, like, you know, the space bar and draw out the tree type thing. That stuff's great. Um, but it it's in another program, and to get animation back and everything, you've got to cache out an Limbic file. Um, it used to be that it was only 32-bit on its export. That was a big problem. Uh, generally, exporting out a really huge hero tree uh, can also be a really big problem. And how uh, Max reads that can sometimes be an issue. Uh, because Speed or uh, GrowFX is native, I've had a lot more success with really high poly trees. Like we're talking like tens of millions with all the leaves and all this crazy stuff having GrowFX handle it and not having to export and all of that than um, you know using something like SpeedTree. SpeedTree is an awesome application. Um, I totally dig it, but for for hero guys like this where it's all this interaction that I need with the environment, I generally my go-to for something like this is gonna be GrowFX. Even like vines, all that stuff. Um, any highly interactive vegetation and environment work that I do, GrowFX is always, always going to be my go-to. Hopefully that answers your question. Alright, so convert this guy, the baked one, to an editable mesh. And we're going to export this guy now. The fuck, Max? I hate this thing. Or we're not going to export. We're going to save, close, and reopen. <laughs> that damn button. You know, there's a there's a thing you can run and you get rid of it and you bring your file menu back. Uh, we do it at the office. And I don't know why I don't do it at home. Well, I do. Because I'm lazy when it comes to customizing my, my UI. Um, so it's getting about that time too where I'm going to need to skedaddle. So if you guys do have questions uh, before I wrap this up, that would be a now would be a good time to ask. So I just want to get that tree into uh, into ZBrush before I finish here. So anything, anything you want, Bueller, Bueller. All right. So now look at that. It's back. ZBrush and to ZBrush. 
OBJ when I can find it. Does the tree and grow effects? What? Does the tree and grow effects generate a mesh? Yes. Yes, it does. All right. So hero tree baked. Or is it a native object? Um, so it is a uh, procedural object to begin with. And um, so you can bake it to become native. Uh, you can also add modifiers up on top of it. This is another cool thing. And this is why um, in the grow effects speed tree conversation, um, let me launch my onion again. Um, one also really nice thing about using speed tree or not speed tree grow effects Edward, sorry um using grow effects is that even if it's not baked and i've got my tree here and i have done this um in the preferences convert to mesh you can come in and once you've checked that you can start adding modifiers up on top so it's essentially a max native object at that point. Now, every modifier can't be added to it, but you could add an FFD to your mesh. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. And it still maintains like wind animation that, you know, stuff that you're doing to the uh, grow effects object in its uh, procedural nature. That is just fucking awesome. Like gives you a ton of power. Uh, or you can, you know, as I did here, There we go. Uh, you know, bake it down to a mesh, and then you can do, you know, whatever you want to it. All right. Let's bring this guy up. And subtools, and go to that guy. Import. To ZBrush Hero Tree Baked. And voila. New tree updated, interacting with you know, the rocks that I have uh, started to sculpt here. All right, um, if there, I'm going to save. If there are any other questions, uh, please ask now. I'm going to end this session here in a moment. <clears throat> so I can, yup, uh, yup for question. Cool. Uh, you can also use multi-scatter to generate forest out of trees. Yeah, and that's the other nice thing too, and you'll kind of end up seeing that is I use um, I use forest pack, but you can do the same thing with multi-scatter. I'll keep my trees live like while I'm working on them. So as you're kind of generating your environment, you can be simultaneously working on your scattering and working on the plants that uh, that you're going to be scattering. You can create like a low res version of it scatter that, start to have an idea, and then as you're working on the plant, your scattered version is up or yeah, basically up you know, in real time and updating. Uh, yeah, we'll be, I'll be using, you know, forest pack, but multi-scatter, forest pack, carbon scatter, uh, potato, potato, it's pretty much the same freaking thing. I really have no no allegiance to one over the other. I've used uh, used them all, and I don't really find one to be exceptionally more uh, beneficial than the other. Each one has maybe one or two cool features. There are some cool things in Forest Pack that I've seen uh, in their new build that I have yet to see implemented in the other two, but I'm sure it's like a matter of weeks. Okay, so... I am going to end this and I'll pick it back up on Monday and we'll start detailing up these rocks and then we'll end up going back to grow effects, finishing up the tree, adding all the roots and everything, adding the branches, um, the leaves, and then again I will bake it out, bring it back into the brush, gonna sculpt this bad boy, add some people into it, uh, do all the other good stuff. And then we'll go out to Mari, uh, texturing, all that good stuff, back into Max, work, uh, 
gonna treat this object here as a little hero piece get it up and running all nice and then I'll build out the rest of the environment from there so you'll kind of get we'll get into shaders and some stuff like that a little bit faster than if I was doing the entire vi environment um, all at one go so that's the plan I hope you enjoyed yourself this morning uh, or this evening or whatever the hell it is wherever you are um, so stop by on Monday or check out the videos that are recorded on the YouTube and please if you have not done so follow me on Facebook um, Angry Polly's and I'll have updates and all sorts of cool stuff to share so it's been nice chatting and showing you guys this stuff have a good morning or or day not to be totally